three, two, one, go. I previously built some engines that can run on compressed air, but recently I've been thinking, what if I could build an engine that just runs on atmospheric pressure? I found this syringe in the bushes near my house, and it gave me an idea. If I take a syringe and seal the end and pull the plunger back, it takes quite a lot of force to get it to go all the way back. So when I let go, the plunger is forced back into the syringe. What's actually happening here is that by pulling the piston back, I'm decreasing the air pressure inside the syringe, or in other words, I'm creating a vacuum. The low pressure air inside the syringe exerts less force on the piston than the air from the atmosphere does. That's why when I let go, the piston is forced back into the syringe, thus balancing the forces which are acted on the syringe. So the idea is to try and use the motion of the plunger to power something. When I started researching this, I quickly came across Tom Stanton's atmosphere power car video, which is really cool, but I wanted to do something different. So I'm gonna build an atmosphere powered dragster. This car has two syringes. Okay, so he's, he's built one of them too. How about a syringe rocket that when you pull the syringe back, So as you can probably tell by the title of the video, I decided to go with an atmosphere-powered plane. Say what? Yeah, so I changed my mind about halfway through this project, and I'm actually going to build a boat instead. So first of all, I'm going to try and make the engine. Is it even an engine? Apparently so. The basic idea of this atmosphere-powered engine is to convert the linear motion of the piston traveling down the syringe into rotary motion to spin a propeller. I chose to design it so that the propeller will be in line with the syringe, but the problem with mounting it this way is that the axis of rotation of the reel that I get is not in the orientation that I want. So to get it to work, I need to change the axis of rotation. I found a couple of ways to do this. One of these was a worm gear, but this is a speed reducer and it can't be run in reverse, so this is no good to me. The other option is a bevel gear, and these are quite common, and you've probably seen them in car differentials. So now I just need to go into Fusion 360 and design a set of bevel gears. I've literally been looking at gear theory for the last two days to try and design these bevel gears from scratch. And I've got precisely jack shit. Though I did find this plugin, but it was $20. I did finally find a way to design a bevel gear by slightly modifying a spur gear. So now I figured out how to design a bevel gear, I designed the rest of the gearing system around this, and this is what I came up with. The syringe piston will be attached to a reel by some string, so that as the atmospheric pressure is forcing the piston down the syringe, it causes the reel to rotate as it unwinds. The shaft of the reel is then attached to a gear train, which increases the rotational speed at each step at the expense of decreased torque. This gear train has a ratio of 1 to 96, so that for every one rotation of the reel, the propeller will rotate 96 times. The bevel gears then convert the rotational motion 90 degrees to drive the propeller in the correct direction. So now we just need to print it off and put it all together. Woo! 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 It's actually really fun to just play with the gears. So before going any further with this, I'm going to test it under load to see if anything breaks. Because something always breaks. <coughs> so now I'm just going to test whether the string holder and the gear are strong enough to pull the piston up. Right, well, that's clearly not gonna work. So I've increased the diameter of the reel as much as possible while still allowing it to fit into the bearings. Let's try it again. Okay, so it wasn't strong enough. So I calculated the force that is required to pull the piston back based on a full vacuum in the syringe and it came out at around 13 kilos. So I found some fishing line that said it could hold 17 kilos and bought it off Amazon. I really hope this monofilament works. <sighs> and that also snapped. In the shop I found some fishing reel which said it could hold 
54 kilos, so let's give that a go. With a slight redesign of the reel to accommodate the new fishing line, I gave it a test and it all seemed to work fine. I don't think this is going to be powerful enough for a plane, so I'm going to pivot and try and power a boat instead. I didn't want to redesign the entire engine, so I tried to design a hull which I could attach the engine to. So essentially, I've designed this hull that needs to be printed in two parts. This is mainly because my 3D printer isn't big enough to print it in one go. The bottom of the hull will be two acrylic sheets which I will join together, and the sides of the hull will be made from some foam board which I was going to use to make the plane wings. Because I'm not printing this boat as one piece, and there's several joins, chances are it's not going to be watertight. So to try and make the boat watertight, I'm going to use this all-weather paint. Paint? It's fucking tape. I'm going to use this all-weather tape around the joins, and hopefully that will seal it. I could use glue, but the commitment scares me. The original engine remains the same, with the only difference being that the final drive to the propeller is now a belt drive. This is because I needed the propeller as low as possible in the hull so that it would sit on the waterline, and this was difficult to do with gears. Now there's a slight problem, and that is that I'm going back to university in about three days, and the weather isn't looking too promising. There's only one sunny day I can go and test the boat, and I've not even printed it yet, and it's going to take about 24 hours to print both parts. So I don't even know if I have enough time to get this done, but let's see what we can do. Well, I appear to have done some measurements wrong. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock! So now I've just got to put these polystyrene pieces in the side slots to finish off the hull, then I can put it in the water and test for any leaks. It floats quite well, but if I push down on the boat to submerge it a bit more, some leaks do appear, but they're pretty small, and the boat isn't going to be in the water that long anyway, so I'm just going to leave it like this for now. All that's left to do now is finish the assembly by attaching the engine to the hull, then I can wind up the engine and see if it runs. Winding up the engine took way longer than expected. I couldn't use the lever I attached because it caused the whole engine to twist in the mounts, and I was afraid of breaking something, but we got there eventually. One eternity later. Right, so now I just gotta let go, and hopefully it will spin the propeller. ideal weather for testing a boat down. But it's probably a good thing because the boat doesn't even work. So it gives me a few days to try and work on a solution. When I attach the engine to the belt drive and the propeller, the piston just seems to get stuck when it's wound up. It could be that there's something wrong with the belt drive or that the gear ratio is just simply too high. But now I have to pack up and leave, so this project's gonna get put on hold for a while. Not that this makes the slightest bit of difference to you, as due to the power of video editing, you won't even notice. So the project was delayed a little bit longer than I was hoping, but I think I finally fixed all the issues with the boat. I originally thought that air was leaking through the piston seal, so to try and rectify this, I applied an excessive amount of silicone lubricant to see if the amount of leaking would decrease. But this did nothing. Therefore, I realized it wasn't actually the piston seal which was leaking, but it was actually the syringe end cap. I proved this is what was happening by sealing the end off using some tubing which came with the syringe and carrying out the same test as before. And as you can see, it worked much better. The problem is though, is that I couldn't use this tubing on the syringe due to space restrictions. So I came up with a high-tech solution which involved taking some plastic from a bag of potatoes, covering the end of syringe with it, and then putting the cap on. And it worked. Sometimes my genius is... it's almost frightening. The other problem was with the belt drive, which wasn't gripping very well on the teeth and also seemed to cause a lot of resistance on the propeller. To fix this, I completely removed the belt system and replaced it with the gear system instead. So now it's time to give it a test in the real world, which in this case, will be in my bathtub.
Then, just for the fun of it, I took it to a local reservoir to watch it spin around in circles. So the engine works, and to be honest, it lasted a lot longer than I expected. But what I didn't think about was that the propeller would cause the boat to continuously go in a circle. Despite this, I think this was somewhat a success, and it also leaves me plenty of things to work on if I was to do a version 2 of this boat. And if that's something you would like to see, let me know down in the comments. So that's going to be it for this video. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a like, and thanks for watching.